Proudly we hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half-hours, starring Lee Tracy, and presented transcribed by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star and host on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Lee Tracy. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart, and hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. A very intriguing title to our play, Lee. Exactly what is the greatest adventure? <laughs> well, Ken, you know, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> but I guarantee an exciting story and a real surprise ending. We'll be ready for the first act after your short but very important message. Well, Lee, I have a few words for the young men and young women. Important words. You should know, if you don't know already, that the United States Army and the United States Air Force can help you plan and start a successful career. At the same time, you can serve your country now when you're needed most. Yes, you can make an exciting and useful career for yourself that you'll be proud of. So visit your U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station today. Find out about the many opportunities for service to your country in either of these two great branches of the service. And now, with your star, Lee Tracy, in the role of Reb, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production of The Greatest Adventure. It was shortly after Reb had returned from his exploration of the desert country to the west that he received word from Nar, the noted astronomer. He had never met Nar, but knew him to be a brilliant, eccentric, a strange, rather mysterious creature who dwelt alone on a vast, secluded estate near the mountains. Reb was a born adventurer, always seeking the new and unusual. So naturally, his interest and curiosity were fully aroused by the summons. I'd hoped you'd accept my invitation. Somehow I thought you would. <laughs> well, frankly, I couldn't resist. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. The pleasure is mine. Come, let's sit out here on the terrace. There's a cool breeze and a fine view. Ah, you certainly are secluded here. For the type of work I do, seclusion is best. I'm thought to be a sour, old, fuddy-duddy because of it. But really, Red, <laughs> I'm neither sour nor old. <laughs> I can see that. Sit down here. Zuko, bring some refreshments, please. Ah, that's better. I've been working too hard. It's good to sit down. You're right about the breeze and the view. Is all that yours? All of it. Magnificent, isn't it? It's a view you can never tire of. Exactly. Tell me, Red, are you rested from your latest exploit? Completely. Must have been a fascinating experience. It had its moments. You know about what we found. Oh, yes. You may be a little surprised to hear that I followed your travels and adventures very closely for some time. And now it's my turn to ask why. Oh, put everything there on the table, Suko. We don't wish to be disturbed under any circumstances. Mm. That Suko moves rather quietly. A very efficient specimen. Now, you were saying... I was asking, why the interest in me? Here, try some of this. My own special concoction. Naturally, there's a very good reason. Can't you guess? Well, I might try, but I don't like to. Why play guessing games? Say, this is delicious. I thought you'd like it. Yes, you're right. There is no need for guessing. At this point, until I see your reaction, I can only give you the bare essentials and ask you... Would you not be interested to give me your word that you will never repeat any of this? You have my word. Good. As you know, I'm an astronomer. There are few, if any, who know the universe and its working as well as I. Well, I have planned an adventure. An interplanetary trip. It is not a trip which I can take alone. I need assistance. Someone to go with me. And you'd like that someone to be me? <laughs> well, I, I'm flattered, but why me? I... I know no more than the next about the stars and their courses. <laughs> Frankly, I thought you'd show a bit more surprise about my plan. You realize no one has ever attempted a thing like this. I know there's been a lot of a century or two, but at that I'm not surprised. Matter of fact, I suspected as much. In one sense, I'm disappointed. But in another, I'm not. 
I'm glad to find that you have a brain as well as brawn. You still haven't told me why you'd like me to go along with you. Because on this adventure, I'll need someone upon whom I can depend. Someone who's used to the unusual. Someone with courage who can act quickly in a pinch. There isn't anyone who fits that description better than you. I can teach you everything else you have to know. I see. Uh, how and where are you planning to go on this trip? I'm sorry I've told you as much as I can for now. If you're interested enough to join me, no. I'll... Oh, Allah. Come join us. Allah, this is Red, whom I'm sure you've heard. Oh, yes. Everyone has heard about the great Red. How do you do? We were just talking about... I'm sure you were. And has the great Reb agreed to go with you, or is it a little too fantastic even for him to swallow? Now, Hala. What I really came to say was this. The last experiment was a success, and we'll repeat it again in the third time segment. Do you wish to be there? Of course. That's wonderful. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll get back to work. Uh, a pleasure to meet you. You know, I had the distinct feeling that she didn't like me at all. <laughs> I must apologize to you. I'm afraid it's all my fault. You see, she wants to go, too. Well, why not let her? There will only be room for two of us. Hmm. Uh, who is she, anyway? My ablest assistant. She's really very charming. Pretty, too. Well, Red, how much time would you like to think this over? I don't wish to rush you. A trip into space. Where, I know not. How, I know not. The first trip of its kind. <laughs> I'd never forgive myself if I didn't go along with you. Just fit those two ends in the slots there. Now, this is a map of our solar system. Here we are right here. And this. What? Well, even I know that there's nothing there. I thought you astronomers had all agreed on that. It, it's too close to the, uh, to the sun or something. I'm one astronomer who does not agree with the rest. My reasons for not agreeing are rather good. I've proven conclusively to my own satisfaction that life exists on this planet, and in a short time, I'll prove it to yours. But if you know that, why keep it such a secret? I must confess to you, Reb, I'm full of vanity. It would be startling enough to announce that I could prove life exists on Zaros, but think of the acclaim I shall receive after we've gone there and come back, perhaps bringing a creature of Zaros with us. Suppose we don't come back. If we fail, Hala will announce my finding. Well, I guess Zaros is closer to us than any of the rest. That's correct. When we leave, it will be nearer to us than at any other time. Well, how about showing me what we're going to take this trip in? We'll go as to... What's that? Quick, follow me. Well, what happened, Hala? They cried again. Did you catch any of them? One, they're bringing him in now. Say, what's this all about? I'll explain in a moment. Bring him here. You. What are you called? Please, sir. Loco, I meant no harm. Stop your sniveling. Who put you up to this? Diga, sir. It was Diga who ordered us. I might have known. How many of you were there? As many as all this. What were you told to do? To find out what lies in the valley there. What were you told to look for? Buildings such as these. I don't like it. Have the guards doubled? Please, sir. I meant no harm. Take him away. No, please. Please don't hurt me. Please. Well, what'll they do to him? Nothing, nothing. We'll keep him here until we leave. Well, what's it all about? Isn't Diga an astronomer, too? That's right. He's my greatest rival and worst enemy. There isn't anything he wouldn't do to find out what we're up to. Once he found out, there isn't anything he wouldn't do to prevent it. Well, sounds like you astronomers aren't exactly a friendly sort. This is the third attempt. He's onto something. Why don't we pay him a call? We haven't time for that sort of thing. Oh, the great Red might have time for it. I imagine he'd be very good at it. <laughs> Beauty, brains, and a vindictive nature. Oh, is that so? Well, let me tell Hello. you, Red. Behave yourself. Aren't we due for the demonstration you promised? Well, probably won't work now. I'll get it ready. We'll have a few minutes to wait. Let's sit down here. What are we going to see? It isn't what we'll see. It's what we'll hear, I hope. I told you I'd prove to you there's life in some form on Zaro. Is that thing with all the dials going to do that? Exactly. I'll try to explain. Some years ago, I began experiments in sending my voice out into space. I reasoned. If we could have that sort of thing right here, why couldn't a planet such as Zaros be reached in the same manner? Well, not to bore you with details, I had no success. For all I know, my voice may have reached Zaros, but there was no way of telling if it was heard. Of course, I tried other planets too. But for some reason, I've always been drawn to Zaros. Well, next I turned my experiments around. 
Perhaps one of the planets had voice transmission as we do. In such was the case, I might pick it up. You can imagine my delight when I found out that my reasoning was correct. You mean you can receive voice transmission from Zaros? Yes, I've been listening in on Zaros now for... Well, here, I wrote down the first date in this journal. See for yourself. Well, now. that's over... Quite a long time, isn't it? Well, tell me, uh, what have you heard? What do they sound in like? In just a moment, you'll hear for yourself. They seem to have broadcasts similar to our own. Are you ready, Hala? Stand by. Well, sometimes there's so much interference that we get nothing. I hope this won't be one of those times. <laughs> you heard what Hala said. Uh, can't you get rid of any of that, Hala? No, it's just getting worse. We'd better try later. You might know. Well, we'll have any more opportunities. All right, Hala, shut it off. When can you try again? Probably not until the sixth time segment. But tell me, what do they sound like? Well, it seems they speak in a number of different dialects. One of which is not too different from our own. And you'll be amazed, astounded, completely bowled over when we tell you that we have learned it and can understand it and speak it. I am amazed, astounded, and completely bowled over. And more than that, I think it's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> She's right. We know a great deal about the creatures of Zaros. Well, don't keep it a secret. Tell me. Well... Technically, they're not too far behind us. But as far as their relations with each other, they're about 500 to 1,000 milats younger. They're barbaric and primitive and quite warlike. There's no way of knowing how they'll greet us. As far as we've been able to figure out, they're constituted on much the same design as we. Do you mind if I remark this is fascinating? <laughs> I am completely bowled over. <laughs> you look it. Oh, you had me worried. I didn't know whether you included laughter in your life. <laughs> now, who looks dumbfounded? Come on. <laughs> I'll now show you what we're going to travel in. Well, there she is. What do you think of it? Beautiful. I've never seen anything like it. It looks big enough to carry more than two. Most of the space is utilized for fuel. It'll be a long trip. How soon? Not for quite some time. There's still much to do. And we can't go until Zaros is in the right position. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm growing impatient already. Oh, Nar, why can't you take me too? You know there'd be room enough. I'm sorry, Hala. You're too young. Too lovely. And should we fail to come back, there must be someone to hand out the facts. I'll see you later. Mm. Poor Hala. I think I know how she feels. To think of going out there, into space, the millions and millions of lonely miles of nothing, and one small light to aim for, one small speck where life grows as it does here. It is the greatest adventure of all. Me, Tracy, starring in the role of Reb in the proudly we hail production of The Greatest Adventure, will return for the second act in just a moment. But first, I want to point out that every man and every woman in the United States has a definite part in the stepped-up program of national defense. We have a tough job ahead of us, a job for everyone. So if you have the physical and educational qualifications, volunteer for the United States Army. You'll share the feeling of satisfaction in doing your part for our national defense. Visit your nearest Army and Air Force recruiting station. Take it up with them. There are many opportunities for technical training in the Army. Your local recruiter will be glad to give you all the necessary information. See him today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star, Lee Tracy, in the role of Reb, we present the second act of The Greatest Adventure. fuel tanks have been placed here and here. This type of construction will aid us greatly in the takeoff. Now, let us suppose... Their language is more guttural than ours. The vowel sounds are made... All right, now, let me see if I got this straight. We have approximately this distance to travel, 
At cruising speed, it'll take us... Course? No, no, no. Now listen. From the beginning, simulate the entire takeoff procedure. Pressure. Gravitational pull. How far? Again. Once Again. more. Again. The angle of incidence divided by... What are you mumbling the... about? Uh, oh, 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 hello, hello there. I, I, was, I was just trying to straighten out everything you and Nar have been hammering into me. It's a hard <laughs> job. I'm afraid I, I'm not a very good student. Oh, oh, nonsense. You're a much better student than I would have given you credit for when we first met. I don't blame you for being so prejudiced. Well, I guess there's nothing I can do but be a good sport about it. And I realize it's not fair to take it out on you. Now, that makes me feel better. Oh, isn't it a lovely night? Why don't you sit down here and enjoy it? Oh, I can't, really. I've got to I know, up. I know, I know. Here, sit down. <laughs> That's better. Uh, where's Nar? Oh, gazing at his one and only true love. <laughs> Zaros? <laughs> Who else? How did you come to work for him? I was recommended by the university. He was looking for an assistant. And he took one look at you, and that was all. Oh, oh no. He was a perfect beast. He cross-examined me until I was ready to tell him I didn't want the job. But you didn't? No, I didn't. Remarkable, isn't it? Oh, yes. In many ways. You know, I'm sure that only Nar could have convinced me at our first meeting that what he had in mind was not the wild dream of a quack. I've had complete confidence in him from the beginning. I actually think his ship will take us to Zoros, and that our only danger lies in... Something unforeseen happening out there in space. You're not afraid? Oh, I don't think so. Excited, eager to be gone. I dread the thought of your going. I'll be left here to watch, to sit alone and think somewhere out there amidst the countless flickering lights of the universe, there's a tiny speck of light, smaller than all the others, hurtling through the uncharted and untouched regions of space on its way to somewhere... Oh, no way. And your dread will be because you're not there with us? In part. Ella, I... Come on! They've gotten in again. You should have stayed back at the laboratory. Well, that's my fight as anyone. Burn out there! Ziga never gives up. This is his boldest attempt yet. Have they managed to get inside like this before? Um, at least not far enough to now. There they are! There they are! Put those lights on them! Get down. Tell us. Tell us. Are you all right? I am. Oh, don't frighten me like that. Keep down. You up there. Put on your arms. You're surrounded and outnumbered. Come on, be quick about it. What are you doing, boys? If you don't give up fast, you'll find out. We're coming in. Hold those lights on them. Keep down, Halla. Oh, Nar was right. Now what? You are good to have around when trouble comes. I don't like it. There's no way of knowing that we got them all. That bunch may have given up on purpose. I thought of that. I pulled your guards into the valley, an outer ring and an inner ring. I don't think they can get through it. Mm, you don't know Diga. What about getting to the source of the trouble? There's no time for that. I don't believe in such outdated and uncivilized actions. I could appeal to the council, but if I did, it would mean divulging everything. We can't do that now, but we can do something else. What? We can put ahead our departure. Well, won't that throw your timing all out of kilter? I can compensate without too much trouble. How, how far will you put it ahead? I thought it over. We'll leave at the end of the fifth time segment. Tonight. Oh, no. Why not? Oh, no, no reason, I guess. Except that it seems so sudden. The longer we wait, the more chance Diga has in finding out our plan. Exactly. Have the loading crew alerted. We have much to do and little time to get it done. Close the after port. <sighs> well, Hella, that does it. Yes. Now I'll be ready soon. Let's uh, let's step outside. For a fast farewell. Now well, you you mustn't look so downhearted. I know. When we're out there, Hella, I'll think of you. And I, you, Red. 
When I came here, I had nothing to lose. I've had no one to leave wherever I went. It's better to go knowing someone is waiting for your return. Whatever happens, I'm glad we met. Glad that I came to know you and, well, in spite of myself, found it. Oh, Red. Red, be sure and come back to me. We'll both come back, Ella. We better go in. Snarl will be looking for you. Ella, once we're aboard, clear the valley. You'll be able to watch us from the terrace. All right. Goodbye, Nar. Good luck. Oh, cheer up. We'll be back in no time. Maybe if you're <laughs> if you're good, we'll take you on the next trip. I wish you'd take me on this one. Well, you haven't much time. You better get aboard. Come along, Red. Wait for me, Ella. Go now. Close the port. Check your instruments. Equalizers neutral. Central panel free. Fuel selector set. Dynascope at zero. Trajectory. Have you tested your strap? Yeah, everything. Then I think we're ready. We're now at minus 15. Call off the time. Good luck, Reb. Good luck, Snar. Minus nine. Minus eight. Minus seven. Minus six. Minus five. Minus four. Minus three. Minus two. Minus one. Zero. Some takeoff. It was a bit violent. Did your strap hold? Sure. Is it all right to undo them? Yes, we'd better. We've got a lot to do. Can you believe it, Nar? We're really on our way. Everything seems to be in good order. Well... What do you say we have a look at Zaros on the screen? Ah, good idea. <laughs> Let's see, see what we're getting into. <laughs> uh, uh, there she is. Mm. It looks much closer already. I should hope so. Mm. Planet Zaro. I wonder if those who dwell there have any idea they're going to have visitors. I doubt it. She has a kind of kind of green color, doesn't she? I suppose that explains the name uh, Zaro. From the ancients, of course. Zaro and her sister. There's no life on her sister. None. A dead satellite. Nah. What do the what do the creatures of Zaros call their planet? Certainly not Zaros. I'm surprised Hala didn't tell you that. No. They have a rather odd and beautiful name for their world. They call it the Earth. The Earth. Huh. It is a beautiful name, isn't it? The Earth. Well, Earth, we're on our way to you. I hope you'll bid us welcome.
star, Lee Tracy, will return with a word about next week's show in just a moment. But first, a special message from our star, Lee Tracy. The month of February marks the 50th anniversary of the United States Army Nurse Corps. I know that Americans everywhere will want to join me in saluting this gallant organization. For half a century, Army nurses have served patients in military hospitals in the United States and around the world. For half a century, Army nurses have earned tributes wherever American troops have been stationed. For instance, here's one tribute from a surgeon in the Far East Command, and I quote, The members of the Army Nurse Corps have all distinguished themselves by their devotion to duty, their utter disregard of working hours, and their willingness to do anything that needs to be done at any and all hours. They have displayed courage, stamina, and determination. They complete every task with which they are confronted in a superior manner, unquote. Yes, let's all join the thousands of grateful patients in saying thanks. Happy birthday, Army Nurse Corps. Lee, I'm sure we all feel the same way in congratulating the United States Army Nurse Corps for its many years of wonderful service to mankind. And I'd like to take this occasion to tell the young women of America that the Army needs more nurses. In fact, 3,000 more by June 1951. So if you are a registered nurse, find out today whether or not you can qualify for a commission. Write or wire the Surgeon General, Department of the Army, Washington 25, D.C. I repeat, the Surgeon General, Department of the Army, Washington 25, D.C. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented in cooperation with this station by your Army and your Air Force. Proudly We Hail stars Lee Tracy. Supporting Mr. Tracy were Joseph DeSantis as Nar, Helen Christian as Hala, and George Clark. The Greatest Adventure was written by DeWitt Cuff. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarnieri. Proudly We Hail is directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Lee Tracy. Next week, our Proudly We Hail play involves a successful writer, a beautiful young lady, a witty Irishman, high speed on a California highway, and a mysterious house in the fog. <laughs> we hope you'll be with us. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>